Hello, and welcome back to Coding with Unity. Today, I will be showing you how to create a blood splatter effect using a particle system with audio. First, we will be using it on a normal sprite renderer, then we will be using it on a tile map, and after that, we will be using it on a sprite shape controller. So, unlike normal, I will not be writing the code live, and instead just showing you how the code works. For our particle system, it's simply a normal particle with the speed from 5 to 10, the start size 0 to 0.25, a start color of dark red. We put our gravity modifier on 1 and set the simulation space to world. We also made sure to turn on play on awake for this demo, but normally you would probably not want play on awake on. You would probably want to control the play through when your character takes damage. I set my max particles to 20 because it is emitting two sets of 10 on intervals of 0.5 to kind of replicate a heartbeat. But of course, you could set this to whatever you wanted. Say if you wanted more particles, put this up to 100 so it doesn't cap your particles, and every pump it will shoot out 20 particles. If you don't want the heartbeat like effect, just change your cycle to 1 and it will do one splatter per shot of the loop. If you wanted to not loop, which you probably don't during gameplay, turn off looping, and every time you click play, it will emit 20 burst particles out with their size and speed randomized in your shape of a cone with the cone edges squeezed in all the way to replicate the area the damage is coming from. We'll also make sure to turn collision on using the world and 2D. We used high quality collision, but you could probably turn that lower if you wanted to. If your world is static, then of course lower that. We set a ground layer to help with performance and then made sure our tiles are also set to the ground layer. You'll also need to turn on send collision messages for when we add in the spawning of the blood splatter effect. On the renderer, we'll turn on stretched billboard with a length scale of 2, and that I believe that is all we need to do for the particle system. Then I have written this particle collision script, which simply says every time a particle collides with the ground layer, we will spawn a sprite mask. So on start, we have particle equals get component particle system, and then here I have a little bit of functionality for controlling the amount of sounds that can be played within a certain amount of time. So on 0.55, with a max sounds of 3, only 3 sounds of blood splatter effects can go off every 0.55 seconds. You can feel free to play with this to get an effect that you prefer, but the reason we have this added in is if you have 3 particles or more or say 10 particles that hit right after another you'll get a weird do 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 effect instead of the splatter that you want. You could also set this to 0.1 and 1 to help get rid of that or 0.2 and 1 so only one blood splatter effect could happen every 0.2 seconds. But of course if you want every single sound to go off feel free to set this to 0 and 0. Let's play the game and see what I'm talking about. You can notice if you pay attention that every single blood splatter isn't actually making a noise. If we change this to zero and zero, you won't hear anything apparently. Or zero and a hundred or a thousand. Now you'll hear every particle makes a sound. I thought having it at sound cab 0 would just make it constantly reset, making the max sounds not matter, but I was wrong. So if you put this on point 1 and 1, you can rotate to face this directly at the ground, point 1 and 1, and you'll see that it doesn't make as bad of a noise. If we put this on 0 and 100, you'll see it makes a weird layering effect that doesn't sound as nice. 
so feel free to find a value that you like here for a noise that you like. Turn our cycles back to 2. That sounds pretty decent. What about point 2? Alright. Anyways, but going back into our particle collision file, you see here that all I am doing is getting all of the collision events of the particles, getting the count of the collision events, looping through them, and then instantiating a splat prefab on each area where the particle collided. Then here is where the rest of the audio algorithm takes place. Going back into the game, how the effect is actually working, if we drag in a splat renderer, and then move it down in front of this, you'll see that as the splat appears on the object, it shows up. This is because the ground is using a sprite mask, and the splat renderer is set to only be visible inside of a mask. The ground has the same sprite on the sprite mask area as the tile sprite renderer is using. But what if you wanted to use it on a tile map? You don't actually have access to the tiles placed on the map. But if you are using a rule tile or something like that from the 2D's Extras pack, you can place your tile mask game object that holds a 1x1 one one square tile mask to be auto placed at the same area as your tile map grid. For corner pieces, I don't have it set up, but all you would have to do is duplicate your tile mask prefab and instead of using a square just look for one of the corner pieces from the tile map terrain sprites that you are using. On our splat renderer we have a destroy after to make them destroy themselves after they've been spawned for a certain amount of time. This file is set up to be used for the grids tile map and the sprite shape renderer. That is why we have a sprite mask and a sprite renderer in here. But for the splat renderer, it is a sprite renderer without a mask. So the what we are looking for is the sprite get component sprite renderer. So when there is a sprite, we store the start color of the sprite. And then in a coroutine, we will be lowering the alpha value and the transform's local scale over time after dying begins. Once the value reaches zero, the object will destroy itself to give it a better fade out effect. Now, that was pretty simple. But what if we wanted to use it on a sprite shape? Now, with sprite shapes, you could make a sprite that matches the shape of your sprite shape. Let me go ahead and open this sprite. So you could make a sprite that follows this sprite, but that would be tedious because every time you updated this, you would have to make a new sprite that follows the new updated path. But if you instead duplicate your sprite shape and put one on order in layer one and one on order in layer zero, and then on your second layer, you use a seamless tile to display a blood color across your sprite shape. You can then use, instead of a sprite renderer, we can just use a splat mask. And on here, we have it set to visible outside of mask. And this one is just set to none. And when you put your splat mask, which is a sprite mask that uses a sprite of a blood splatter to cut out a section of the top sprite shape to show the blood below. If we now move our sprite mask over the sprite shape, you can see a nice blood effect appearing on your sprite shape renderer. Now, if you made an update to your sprite shape, you would have to then update the bottom one also. So say if we were to drag this point up, you can see that the blood splatter stays right there. You could copy this component, go to here, paste this component, and then change your path from the pat normal path to the blood splat path. But I think an easier way of doing this is if we 
use a function inside of Unity to add a function to our drop down menu, we can use an update sprite mask to automatically update it and set the correct sprite shape onto the path. The way this is done is by having a script called update sprite shape that is a menu item. It shows up in context sprite shape controller called update sprite mask. And when you use this command, it simply copies the components from the mask and posts it onto the child using copy serialized mask and child. We then take the child sprite shape and load in the blood splat from the resources folder uses, using resources.load sprite shape blood splat. Going into our resources folder, you can see that we have our blood splat asset inside of the resources folder. And then inside of the sprite shapes folder, we have our path asset. Now, if we were to go to our particle system, scroll down to the particle collision script, change our splat renderer to a splat mask instead. When we click play, the blood splats will show up on our sprite shape renderer. It is as simple as that. In the description of this video, you will be able to download all of these script files and all of the graphic assets you see in this video, and you can use them in whatever project you would like. Other scripts included is a random sprite mask that will be added to the splat mask prefab so that when it gets spawned in on awake, it will use a random sprite on the splat mask component. This is to give a little more random effect when the sprite is splattered onto the ground. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you did enjoy the video, it would also be appreciated if you would like and subscribe. Until next time, have a great day.